Good evening, sir. So, uh, welcome to this session on the uh, live session on digital IC design. Uh, thanks for registering for the course. And uh, before I start, let me again apologize for that, uh, you know, 20 day gap in between where we had failed to respond to the questions. So, uh, I, that has been fixed now. And I'll ensure it does not happen again. Okay. So, uh, anyway, so let's, let's get started uh, right now. And uh, so maybe I can start with some of the questions I received first on the Google form. Okay. Um, okay. Let me see if I'll try to answer the questions first for people who are on the call. Is uh, Kiru Bakaran on the call? Okay, Chetan Gokhale. Okay. Uh, what about Vikalp Kumar? <coughs> Gopi Chand. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, so you had a question, right? Uh, as a student studying in a college with limited knowledge about VLSI design field, I'm interested in knowing about what kind of job opportunities are available for someone like me. <coughs> After completing analog IC design, digital IC design. Okay. Uh, right. So your question is broadly about the kind of, uh, uh, so, so where are you from, by the way, where are you studying? I'm studying at the Rajiv Gandhi University, Andhra Pradesh. In Andhra Pradesh. Okay. Which city? Near Nusuidu, Vijaywada. Okay. Vijaywada. Vijaywada, okay. So, uh, so you have completed both analog IC design and digital IC design, is it? Uh, no, sir. I still completed analog IC design. And you have not? Digital. So, you are doing digital IC design, is it? Now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No. And, and what about analog IC design? Yes, sir. It is completed. No. In parallel, I do, am doing both. Oh, you're in parallel, you are doing both. Okay. So typically, you know, the, once you have completed these two courses, right, you have a very strong foundation in, uh, you know, if you, if you're able to clear the course with a good grade, you will have a strong foundation in, uh, in, in the field of VLSI in general. Okay. And, uh, it will sort of help you, uh, at least, uh, take up interviews in a lot of these good companies. Right. So once you know how, you know, how a flop flip flop works, you know, how uh, various, uh, uh, you know, combinational logic gates are built, how to, how to measure the speed of these gates and all that. Right. You will basically be able to attend a lot of interviews. Right. And uh, may, maybe some follow up courses might be useful. Right. Uh, for example, uh, analog electronic circuits, by the way. Ah, yes, sir. In not NPTEL, but our course. Okay, you're done. Course. Right, right. So I think with see if you have done these courses and what about uh, have you done any semiconductor uh, device course? No, sir. No. no. Okay. So what about some course on no. very log? No, sir. That is not available. Uh, digital system design. Very large course already in previous semester. Okay, so I think if you are, uh, you know, some good course on Verilog would be a very good add on after this, right? Because a lot of these digital design jobs essentially, uh, you know, involve some sort of uh, HDL coding in, in Verilog or VHDL or something like that. So a good digital design course along with digital IC design and analog IC design should enable you to sort of interview with a wide variety of VLSI companies. Okay. 
तो एसेंशियली दैट्स दी दैट्स द दैट्स दी यू नो शॉर्ट आंसर दैट आई कुड गिव यू सो लेट मी सी इफ यू ओके आर देर एनी रेकमेंडेड कोर्सेस और सर्टिफिकेशन सो so there is a certification which is recommended by nptel right anyway in order to pursue vlsi are you aware of that no sir okay so i think you should explore that uh, aspect right uh, i i will just look up with uh, you know nptel and get back to you you know there is a certification that uh, you know the we are, that nptel gives you if you complete a certain sequence of courses okay and that will definitely enable you to sort of uh, you know uh, uh, enable sort of at least enhance your job prospectives okay is that fine what kind of what kind of projects we can do sir at least in this level and what kind of projects uh i think one is you know uh, you must get yourself familiarized with some sort of layout okay how to do layouts of a large circuit and stuff like that usually <coughs> associated with digitalize design is also a layout project okay which uh, unfortunately i am not able to offer on the nptel side because of certain logistical issues right but essentially uh, there is a free tool called electric okay and lt spice so with these two free tools you can actually practically explore and uh, you know uh, educate yourself on most of what the industry needs okay there they might be using more sophisticated tools like cadence but you can learn all of that just with these free tools lt spice and electric okay so i would say these are the sort of a you know a layout based project and a schematic based simulation project is ideally suited for uh this kind of a course go it is suited to go with this kind of a course okay yeah okay is varsha on the call okay uh what about kirti okay uh shantanu yes sir okay you had a question right yeah yeah <laughs> what should i learn next in order to pursue a vlsi as a career okay third year ec student uh, okay so again like i said right doing uh, a basic device physics course digital ic design and analog ic design and analog circuits will get you you know will sort of equip you to sort of take up interviews in most good companies so uh, uh, do you have any i mean i just spoke at length about that so do you have any other question or uh, sir, comment there uh what about pursuing masters because uh, i read about it on the internet and most of the answers were along the lines of you need at least a ms or a phd level uh, okay so yes. see typically what happens is uh, you know if you look at our mtech curriculum at iit madras right <laughs> essentially there are only two courses two core courses okay one is analog ic design analog circuits and other is digital ic design okay and after that of course they have lot of electives that they can take right they do some memory design uh, they can do uh, you know broadband communication circuits pll's and so on right and uh, my colleagues essentially offer all these courses on nptel as well so <laughs> if you take up a masters then that would definitely enhance your job opportunities there is no doubt about that right so i would definitely say uh, you know please do look at uh, gate you know writing gate that is sort of uh, you know as a as a btech student writing gate is probably 
the most important milestone that you should look at right prepare for it write it because it just opens up a lot more opportunities for you sir uh, actually i am also uh, get qualified for third year uh, i wanted to know like what sort of ranks do i need to get into uh, vlsi courses I mean, rank or score no no do they allow you to write ga uh, gate in the third year now uh, yeah from like this year or past year they have been allowing us to okay <laughs> okay i don't know the exact numbers for iit madras but it would be quite high uh, especially for integrated circuits and systems group okay i have to look up the numbers but i would say if you are a third year student then uh, you know and you have already qualified then why don't you just focus and do better next year yes sir right that would uh, you know easily enhance your chances so i the only suggestion i have is to take the preparation for get very seriously and do it just like you know you're you're applying for the best possible job okay sir okay and do it well the, all, all i'm saying is it opens up so many more opportunities what you take you choose later okay okay sir thank you very much sir yeah great <laughs> zafar Zafar, are you on the call? Okay, I'll come back to this question later. Then, uh, Sachidanand. Yes, sir. Yeah. So you had a question. What type of questions will be there in the final exam of digital IC design? Yes, sir. <laughs> I think the type of questions. Sorry, let me just get some water. Type of questions have already been covered in your assignments. Okay, sir. It'll be exactly like that: MCQ, MSQ, and numerical answers. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, Papu Singh. Yes, sir. Okay. So you had a couple of questions. <laughs> how does velocity saturation affect the circuit why is velocity saturation not good for our circuit okay so uh if you look at you know in in one of the assignments in the initial assignments you would have been given a question of uh you know have, have, have you seen a question like this you know you would have been given a transistor okay with you know with certain w by l okay and uh, so let let me ask that question here now okay let's say w by l is 40 lambda by 20 lambda okay there is an other transistor which is 4 lambda by 2 lambda <coughs> okay this is vd vg okay what is the maximum current that can flow in this to this transistor these two transistors and what are the voltages vg and vd that you need to apply for that assume assume in that in this technology vdd is 1.8 volt so what happens if i increase vg what happens to the current current will increase increase so what is the value of vg that i should apply for maximum current vdd yeah so vg equal to vdd and what happens with respect to vd what happens to the current if i increase vd uh current will also decrease it will increase right so this also should be vdd right yeah so this is equal to vdd in both cases 
Correct? Now, what is the max current? Therefore, <coughs> what's the max current in the two cases? See, you, you, you see that W by L is 2, no, in both? Yes, sir. So, in which, which transistor will the current be higher? First, sir. First one, why? Because, sir, uh, W uh, with it. No, no, but W by L, see, the yeah. current expression, right? IDS is mu both N. Both the same, sir. Yeah, okay. Yes, Your yes. argument is both would be the same into V min into VGS minus VT, right? Minus V min by 2, okay, into 1 plus lambda VDS. This is your level 1 spice equation, right? Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. if W by L is 2 in both cases, you would expect both currents to be the same. Right? Yes, yes, but but you see that this is 2 lambda, right? Which means this is probably a short channel transistor. Okay, and this is a long channel device. Right? Yes, sir. So short channel devices suffer from the problem of velocity saturation. As I increase, right, as I start increasing my VD, what will happen is, okay, if you plot the ID versus VDS for a given VGS, IDS, right, I keep increasing my VD, it will go. And if there was no velocity saturation, it would have gone like this. But now it will keep going. And because there's, sorry, because there is velocity saturation, it will be clipped. It will it'll stop earlier for the same W by L. Okay, this is a long channel. And this is short channel. Right? This effect is because of velocity saturation. Okay. You follow me? Yes, yeah, sir. So it means sir, uh, velocity saturation uh, in long channel, uh, uh, it will later VDS value. Uh, we, oh. uh, we will compare uh, from the short <laughs> channel. VDS is greater than. Uh, Short channel. No, no. What I'm what I'm saying is, ultimately, you want the uh, transistor in its on state to drive as much current as you can, you know, as it can drive. Yes. But sir. velocity saturation limits that current, yes, and sir. therefore it yes. slows. It actually slows down your circuit. Yeah. Okay. That's what. That is the effect of velocity saturation on the circuit. Okay, sir. Yeah, I got okay. it. Okay. Okay. Clear? Yeah. Okay. What's your next question? Due to Giddle, how the increase in leakage current, what happens? Okay. This is not a very well understood phenomenon. Okay. At least, uh, I would say, at least for uh, a digital IC design course, it's not, it's a, you know, it's not clear the, you know, what the exact mechanism is. And therefore, I will not even claim to know this. Okay, it's as a designer, all you need to know is the as you reduce VGS and make it negative, current keeps dropping and then it increases. Okay, I don't know what the phenomenon or the mechanism is at a device level. Okay, okay, okay. <coughs> okay. If our output, uh, if our input signal lies between VIL and VIH, uh, so how can we remove this problem? Well, it's very difficult to remove this problem because there it is going to be uh, undefined, right? So, uh, <coughs> you know, you'll, you'll have to go to, you know, you'll have to start making better comparators, actually. So you cannot use a simple inverter. 
so what people do is they start usually using differential comparators here okay with feedback and all that and therefore that uncertain region actually comes down okay <coughs> okay <coughs> okay so when i when you calculate on resistance <coughs> so you're talking about the two methods that i spoke about right yes sir one is the current source and other is the equivalent resistance correct yeah yes sir yes sir yeah so what i was basically saying there is you know if you have a transistor that is discharging a capacitor okay this is c of course this has instantaneously gone to vdd and this capacitor is dropping from vdd to vdd by 2 right yes sir <laughs> so you can do this in two different ways one is you can calculate the instantaneous resistance for each voltage right where v is this okay so this is simply going to be v by i okay and you calculate the average resistance r equivalent as 1 by vdd by 2 right an integral of r of v dv okay. right and the other way is that this guy because it is in velocity saturation or saturation region okay assuming that it is in velocity saturation or saturation all the way from vdd to vdd by 2 okay the drain voltage when it drops from vdd to vdd by 2 if you assume it is in saturation or velocity saturation this is equivalent to a constant current source id sat okay okay so this is simply going to be c delta v by id sat you get it okay yes then so you can do this calculation in two ways you can do the delay calculation as 0.693 r equivalent into c or delay equal to this c delta v by id sat sir 0.693 why uh, from where sorry 0.693 from where uh, uh. yeah that comes from rc circuit theory right it's just ln 2 times rc for 50% delay Okay, sir. Okay. Ah. Uh, <coughs> so logical effort, I told you, right? In the lectures, if you saw it, I told you if you were to compare a NAND gate versus a NOR gate, you know, you could argue that a NAND gate is is better suited for delay yes. than a NOR gate. Yes, yes. Sim simply because the logical effort is better. okay right so i you know in the in the lectures i have given a very detailed explanation saying that you know logical effort is if you were to keep the drive strength same between two different gates then what is the input capacitance that it offers right or if you keep the input capacitance the same what is the drive strength that the gate has right these things you can argue right <coughs> so i mean this you just have to see the lectures and you know if you have done the assignments these things will become clear okay okay so electrical effort of course i told you is just ratio of output capacitance by input capacitance okay intuitively it's basically the it is it is it is you know in some sense the actual capacitance that it has to drive for its gate capacitance right how much delay that is captured by electrical effort okay and parasitic effort is basically just a constant number okay i will not spend too much time on that okay sir what is the physical meaning of logical effort uh, or uh, electrical effort yeah so did you see these lectures yeah sir yeah so there i had mentioned right that like logical effort is <clears throat> you know if if uh, 
see, I'll just point you to that lecture because I've clearly, very clearly mentioned in those lectures. But you, you, do you remember this lecture when I compare a NAND gate and a NOR gate? Yes, sir. Right? I, 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 had yeah. a, I had a circuit like this, right? I had a circuit like this. You had an inverter. Then I put a NAND gate and then a fixed load. And alternately, yeah. I same thing, I replaced the NAND gate by a NOR gate. Yes. Right? Yeah, sir, it so, will become more delay. Uh, yeah, so I explain that first of all, in order to compare these two circuits, you have yes, to sir. make the load capacitance the same. Yeah. Here. Right? Only then, if the load capacitance, the input capacitance of the NAND and the NOR is the same, yeah. then you can compare the path delay. Because then the these two inverters have the same delay. Okay. Right? And of course, because this is a fixed load. Right? This is a fixed load. This and this also have the same delay. Then we can compare these two delays. Comparing the path delay is equivalent to comparing the NAND versus NOR. Okay. Okay. So logical effort is because you are implementing some combinational logic, which is not an inverter, simple inverter, okay. you incur certain losses of input capacitance to output drive strength. Okay. So I okay. urge you to go back and see those lectures again. Okay. Sir. Okay. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Thank you. Himanshu Singh. Yes, sir. Okay. So you had a couple of questions. How to interpret the figure shown in slide 35? <coughs> okay, this is the carry look at adder, is it? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so, uh, okay, let me... But this was not covered in the course, right? Yes, sir. That is, that is why I have asked. Yeah. So essentially, uh, you know, maybe I'll take this question in the end. Okay. Okay, sir. This question. Now, how is the clock edge is fast? How, how can it cause the node to flip? This was mentioned in the fourth lecture of module five with respect to reference to capacitive coupling. Uh, what exactly is this? I mean, so because I, I need like a screenshot or something for me to answer this. So can you do one thing? Can you please take a screenshot of that and, and, and send it to me? Now via mail. Yeah, send it via email to my you know my email ID, right? Yes, sir. Send it to me, right? Okay. <laughs> not, not the discussion forum. Send it to my email. Because okay, I cannot sir. access the discussion forum through my phone now. Okay. Then I will take a look at that and try to answer the question towards the end. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, Satya Prakash Singh. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Yeah. Good evening. Yes. <coughs> okay. Uh, please explain how to find logical efforts of skewed <coughs> NAND and NOR gate. Okay. So. Okay. So we basically have this idea, right? So do you know how to find the logical effort of a skewed inverter? Uh, yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So let's take a high skew inverter. Okay. Yes. <laughs> right. So, can you tell me the W and L? W, w, P, W, N? Sir, for high skew inverter, uh, the W, P for W, P will be two and W, N will be half. Right? Yes, sir. And how did you then find the logical, the, so I asked you to convert, construct a reference inverter, correct? 
Yes, sir. So for okay, so let's say this is for pull up. Okay, sir. Okay, so yes, what sir. is the reference inverter sizes? Sir, sir, two and one. Two and one, correct? One. Yes, what sir. did we do? We took this two, and we retained this as it is, correct? Yes, sir. And based yes, sir. on this two, we made this one. Yes, sir. Right? Yes. Now for pull down. What did we do? We retained the bottom one, sir. Hmm. Right. Yes. So we retained this guy. Right as half, and made this PMOS as one. Double. One. Double. Yeah. Right. So this is how the arrow went. Correct. Yes. <laughs> so all I am saying now is these reference inverters that you con you constructed right for pull down and pull up. Yes, sir. They are the same whether you do NAND or nothing will change because the NAND and NOR gate is constructed with respect to this now. Okay, so let us look at that. Let us look at that. Uh, one second. Uh, edit selection tool. Okay, I'm going to take this out and go to the next page. Okay, good. Hmm. Okay, so now how do you construct a NAND2 gate? Right? So what are the sizes? Tell me for W, uh, N and P. All are two, sir. No, for a skewed NAND gate. I skew. One, one. Ah, it'll be one, one. Two, two. Ah, that's all. Right? Now, so this is input A. So what is the gate capacitance of this guy for input A, B? C, A equal to C, B equal to how much? 3, 3C. 3 3C. 3 what is the gate capacitance of this guy for pull up? In red, I'll write it in red. C in equal to how much? 3C. 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 And in blue, C in three. equals how much? 3 by 2C. 3 by 2C. Correct? Yes, sir. Therefore, pull up logical effort is what? 3C divided by what? Uh, 3C, sir. Exactly. You understand? So this is equal to 1. What about GD? Pull down. Equal to 3C divided by? 3 by 2. 3 by 2. Ah, exactly. 3C by 2. Therefore, you get logical effort of 2. Okay? Okay, sir. You understood? Now, for NOR gate, yes, sir. Yes, sir. it's exactly the same thing. So, the NOR gate sizes will be, NMOS will be half-half. Okay. PMOS will be 4-4. Four, four. So, sir, while uh, while designing the reference inverter, we have to take the skewed inverters only. Yes. This is, okay. see, once you construct the skewed inverter, right? Okay. That's be, That becomes the reference for high skew. With respect to that, you start constructing okay. other combinational logic. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Perfect. You understood? Yes, sir. Okay, what I'm saying is this. These uh, reference inverters that you drew, no, 
for pull up and pull down with respect to the inverter yes sir they are the same for all gates yes sir yes sir <laughs> okay yes sir okay good uh, one more thing sir yes one uh, sir while uh, defining the hold time and setup time in uh, uh, flip flop uh, flops and latches so yes. is hold these parameters defined by the designer or is there some para parametric it's it a parametric thing related to the circuit only no no these are designed these are uh, given to you by the flop designer okay. not by the person consuming it okay see if you remember if you remember for a certain flop we calculated what is the setup time right the time through the pass gate one inverter two inverter three inverter remember so do you remember that case where where yeah, actually, i yeah. i actually evaluated the uh, uh, the delay uh, setup time <coughs> setup time in a flop <clears throat> see the setup time in a flop is a is a function of the delay of delays of inverters and other pass transistors in that circuit okay yes sir yes sir yes. correct yes sir yeah so therefore that's how it gets defined okay sir okay. whole whole time comes because of clock overlap but okay sir okay okay thank you okay. sir <coughs> okay yes, sir. anupama uh, no anupam sorry hello sir uh, yes, sir yes. hello yes sir can i say the trans inverter is a high skewed inverter sorry can i say high reference inverter is high skewed inverter no no what reference inverter uh, reference inverter it means unit inverter uh, can i say high skew inverter no 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 what do you mean by reference inverter what are the what is the w and p w and uh, wn and wp uh p mos is 2 and n mos 1 w w by n. no no n mos is what 1 and, and p, p mos is 2 2 no then how is that high skew they are both the same delay no pull down and pull up yes so so therefore that that is not high skew Okay. 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 Sir, good evening, sir. Yeah, Anupam. Yes, sir. <coughs> Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Sir, in assignment, you ask one question. You keep some launch flip flop in middle the combination and circuit and output is the capture flip flop. Yeah. And you ask if adding one stretch of fiber lining will now allow you to run clock at frequency equal to some constant divided by time period. Yeah. Find out the maximum value of this constant term. Okay. So can you show me the some similar problem about that? In lecture, you can cover this type of problem. I am can solve so, this so, type of question. So, Balaji, which assignment is this? Sir, week eleven, first question. Hello, sir. Yeah. Hello. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, this is assignment eleven, sir. So, ah, uh, so what was the question? The, the question is basically ah. Uh, One second, I just open it. Yeah. Ah, uh, so, uh, should I share my screen or something? Or uh, the question basically says it has a combinatorial circuit in the middle between two sets of flops. Uh, okay. And uh, we are asking how many sets of flops are required to be added in the middle. Okay. Ah, so after after you add, what will be the pipeline to frequency? Before you add, what will be the frequency? The, okay, before yeah. you add, what is the frequency is given as F is equal to one by T. We have defined yeah. it. So after right. you add, is we have said it is K by T, and we are asking for K. Okay, so this assignment right. deadline is over, right? Not yet, not yet, sir, not yet. Oh, not yet. Okay, then I ah. cannot answer it now. <laughs> no, sir, <laughs> sir, can answer what similar problem. Sir, you give the five mark in this question. If we lose, then it's very big. No, no. But I'm saying you you go and look at my lectures. Sir, my first in lecture, I I can't in my, in my, in my lectures. The first thing I talk about is how to pipeline that combinational block 
you know, big combinational block, I break it up as two combinational blocks, no? Yes, sir. And I talk about how you can make... Uh, sir, you can remember? say in combinational block that time, the drive strength, you hear in question, you give the drive strength in two, one, this type of critical delay path you give. It's different no. from your lecture. <clears throat> no, no. Hey, look. The Obviously, the assignment question will be different from the lecture. Okay, the, the idea of the assignment is to see if you are you have understood or not. Okay, it's not to just give the same thing which has been taught. What's life is very difficult in that. That's why. Sorry. I face very difficult in that question. Your assignment. No, no, I can understand that part, right? But that's why you are. We take best of certain number of assignments, right? We are not penalizing you just with one assignment. Okay. Yes, sir. So we will discuss this. Don't worry. We'll discuss this after the assignment deadline. Please look at the lecture. So, Balaji, this is exactly the same, this thing that was taught in the lecture the first time, right? Hey, yes, sir. So, basically, uh, yeah, you're, they have been asked if how many stages of pipeline after you add the stages of pipeline, what is the frequency after pipelining? That's all okay. this is. Okay, yeah. So, please think about this and try it. Okay. Sir, you give the solution up to week seven. And sir, week eight to 12, can we get, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of to... course, they will yeah. all be available. Definitely, they'll be available. Yes, okay. sir. I will be uploading week eight, nine, ten uh, soon. Soon. Okay. But uh, yes, Balaji, sir. do that quickly. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Good evening, sir. Naga Pawan Kumar. Oh, hello, sir. Yeah. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Sorry, what's your name? Yes, sir. I'm Zafar Ahmed. Actually, you called my name, sir. Uh, I wasn't audible at that time. Okay, I know. Just hang on. I'll just finish this and come back to you. Sure, sir. Okay, Naga Pawan Kumar is not there. Uh, okay. Shabazz Ansari. Okay, I'll come back now again. Uh, okay, Zafar. Yes, sir. Okay. So my first question is like, yes. uh, during the sizing, are fractional widths allowed? Yes, in 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 planar technology, it is allowed. In in uh, FinFET technology, it is not allowed. Okay. <coughs> okay. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, and uh, the mirror circuits which we have discussed, we have seen that it is valid for three input XOR gate, right? Yeah. Sir, but uh, and uh, is it valid for two input XOR also? No, it, you try it and see. Is it valid? No, sir. According to the expression which we have seen, like complement and true outputs, according to that, it is invalid. Yeah, it is invalid. So therefore, it doesn't hold. Okay. And so like third question is like uh, the main principle of uh, sizing is to obtain equal rise and fall delay, right? Correct. So, but if we consider uh, any other gates, then parasite due to parasitic capacitance, exactly equal rise and fall delay won't exist. <coughs> See, so, first of all, this, whatever has been taught in theory, right? Yes. In this course is yes. sort of just to give you a, you know, a back of the envelope way of doing it. Okay. Hmm. In reality, what you will do is the standard cell designer will simulate this. Hmm. And in simulation, all these parasitic effect capacitances will come into picture. Okay. And thereby you will capture all this. In fact, they will simulate with the layout, not just with the schematic. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. So once you do it through simulation, this ratio will not be one and two for N and P respectively. Okay. It will be some weird number one and 1.65, for example, in okay. one technology. Another, see, because the VD sat of the transistors could be different N and P. Yes, sir. Right. All these things can be drastically different. So only in simulation, you can figure out the exact WP, but you keep the rise and fall delay same. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. So, uh, simulation softwares will include all the effects. Yes. Right? No, not just simulation software. 
I am saying they will do a post layout parasitic extraction, okay. which includes all the metal resistances, everything. Okay. And then ensure that the W by Ls are uh, W by Ls are chosen appropriately so that the rise and fall delay are the same. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. So one more question. We have seen that yeah. power and energy. So like, is there any other perspective of looking into power and energy like uh, regarding circuits? Like what other perspective? I uh, mean, in this course, I had mentioned that we would hardly get into power energy, right? So I just mentioned the formula. Yes, sir. Like, brief. Yeah, but so what other perspective are you looking at? Uh, like uh, regarding power, we have seen different kind of powers, right? Uh, but uh, energy is also a factor. So like, uh, is there any place where energy is used? Correct. That's actually a very good question. Okay. So if you look at it, okay. Uh, so let us say that I'm able to, uh, so intuitively, okay. Let me just take a combinational block. Okay. Hmm. Assume that I'm operating it at a very high frequency. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Now sir. let's say I start dropping the VDD of that combinational block. Yes, sir. What will happen to a delay or oh, delay will increase. It will increase. That means the frequency at which I can operate it will come down. Correct. Yes, sir. Now, but what will happen to the dynamic power? If I bring down VDD oh, power will decrease quadratically, right? Yes, sir. So actually you would expect that, you know, there's this, the, the energy consumption to drop significantly as I drop this guy, right? Yes, sir. VDD. But what happens is in to complete a certain operation, a combinational logic for it to complete, it now takes longer. Yes, sir. So there are, you know, certain nodes, which are switch switching in your circuit, right? Yeah. Those, those are actually going through dynamic power switching. Yes, sir. But there are other nodes in your circuit, which are just static where there's no switching happening. Yeah. It could just be that, you know, both inputs to, or at least one input to the NAND gate is always zero. That means the output will be stuck at one. Correct. Yeah. That means there's no, there's, there is no, uh, dynamic power on that node output node. Yeah. But there is leakage power because of that, because that guy is, is fixed. Correct. Yeah. That means the leakage power now, because the frequency has, you know, has uh, frequency has uh, de decreased, right? Yeah. You're going to have it leaking for longer. Yeah. So at some point, if I keep bringing VDD down, hmm. my frequency will go up so much, right? That uh, the, my frequency will come down so much that, and the delay will go up so much that the leakage power will start overpowering dynamic power. Yeah. So effectively, if you look at the, uh, you know, the plot of the energy. Okay. Yeah. If you look at energy versus VDD, right? Yeah. You would expect it to simply come down like this, but at some point it will start going up. So this is actually the VDD min at which you can operate the circuit at lowest energy. Okay. I hope that has answered your question. Yes. Sir. So in case where frequencies are uh, very less or in, so in that scenarios, energy is used to analyze the circuit. Yeah, actually. Yeah, that is correct. Okay. But more, more, <laughs> more generally. Okay. Hmm. You have to look at the application. Right. For example, if you take your mobile phone, right, this yep. mobile phone is powered by a battery. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Which means there is fixed energy in this until, until and unless I'm able to get to a charging point. Yes, sir. So if there is fixed energy, then I'm actually not interested in the power. I'm only interested in how much energy it consumes. Okay. Okay. So in some sense, like I told you here, 
even if something is high power but it can be completed very quickly yes sir it will still it might still be lower energy okay okay so effectively you have to look at power and energy from these you know these view points but this is a very good question mm -hmm. sir is it because of this reason uh, we are having the battery capacity in mah or ah whereas uh, the battery uh, when power is considered it is in watts exactly exactly that's why your battery is always uh, you know rated in terms of milliamp hours while your charger is always rated in watts because the charger is connected to an infinite source of power energy right you are connecting it to the power grid which is coming from you know some some grid outside effectively you have infinite energy there right so yes. there what matters is only the rate at which you can charge it's not the energy that matters how much energy can it deliver per second how how many phones can you charge in one minute Hmm. Right or one hour. That's all that matters for a charger. So that is always in watts. Whereas batteries are always in either milliamp hour. See, milliamp hour is what charge, right? Yes. It sir. is ampere into time. Yes, sir. So that is effectively some unit of charge. If I multiply by the supply voltage, then it becomes energy joules. Yes. Yes, sir. Right. so effectively this is the philosophy there exactly so who who brought this up by the way who said this just now sir uh, myself abhishek ko very good very good so this is a very good very astute observation sir actually i was uh, inquiring about this uh, few days uh, ago and i came around the concept of uh, depth of discharge dod of a okay. battery so ah. i uh, so when you said that we are actually uh, seeing the charge levels yes in a battery not the whole power so yes. i connected so i connected yeah. that exactly that's precisely the point sir one more doubt from the assignment yes uh, there was one question that in uh, the correct option was if the nmos transistor has leakage and the pmos transistor doesn't have leakage the output voltage will not swing all the way to vdd but will swing all the way to ground okay so sir like if nmos has leakage and uh, assuming static cmos inverter my input is zero so a uh, pmos is all like if due to leakage if certain charge discharges then that will be immediately replenished by the pmos right no no i think what we are talking about see it's like this see this is my inverter okay so what is the question nmos has leakage is it yes sir okay that means you consider the input of zero yes sir so what happens now the pmos is turned on correct yes sir this is off yes sir so if it is off that means there is a certain current coming through this nmos transistor yes sir this is the sub threshold leakage yes sir it may be a very small current yes sir right but that sub you know in 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 steady state there is hmm. not no current that goes to the capacitor yes sir okay this leakage is steady state current that means the same current has to come from vdd yes sir now if there has to be some small current through this nmos transistor yeah that means the vds of that nmos transistor should be slightly greater than zero yes sir otherwise there can be no current yeah right now if vds is slightly greater than zero then this v out is slightly greater than zero on the other hand if the pmos has no leakage it yes. will go to vdd because there is zero current there in steady state yes sir you understand uh, so sir here uh, like no, but uh, we have given zero to the nmos 
and uh, that means the output would be at VDD, yes, and it will be slightly lesser than VDD due to leakage, you mean, right? So, yeah. okay, okay, that's a good point. Wait, wait, let me just see one second, right? So, this is zero, right? And what is going to happen? Uh, it will, yeah, it will be slightly lesser than VDD. Correct. So, sir, PMOS is on, is on. So, on current will anyways be greater than subthreshold current, right? No, no, no. See, but what I'm, okay, okay. What I'm saying is this output will be close to VDD, right? Yeah. Now, through the NMOS, you know the current. It is some very small subthreshold leakage. Yeah. Now, the PMOS is actually turned on. Yes, sir. And it has to support the same current. Yes, sir. So, the IDSP is equal to I off, I sub. At least mod IDSP is I sub. Yes, sir. So, that means the PMOS will be in linear region with a very small VDS to support this. Yes, sir. Correct. So therefore it will be slightly lower than VDD. But sir, uh, like if it's, if it is slightly lower than immediately, uh, like again, it will be charged to VDD, right? No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. This is steady state. This is not transient. It's not that the capacitor is just losing some charge temporarily. Okay. See, ultimately this has to hold, right? I D S sorry. I D S P equal to minus I D S N. Correct in steady state. Yes, sir. Assuming that the ca capacitor is settled to its final value. This has to hold. Yes, sir. If there was no leakage, right? Then one transistor, either NMOS or PMOS is always off. Yes, sir. Therefore, the other current has to be zero. Yeah. So the other transistor, which is on, right, will go into linear region with its VDS to zero and therefore kill the current. Yes, sir. Whereas if there is some subthreshold leakage, like in this case, that will be supported by the PMOS going into linear region with a very small VDS. Okay, sir. Understood. Okay. Sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, one last question. Like, what is the significance of fan out of four delay, sir? Uh, fan out of four delay, right? Yes, sir. So, uh, this I thought was discussed in the lectures, right? Yes, sir. But so, uh, I... see, this fan out of four comes from the fact if you remember this buffering, mm -hmm. right? If you, when we start adding buffers in order to drive a very large capacitance, you know, suppose we have a combinational circuit with very few gates, but yeah. we are trying to drive a very large capacitance, then we have to buffer. Yes, sir. So when we buffered and we solved for that equation, we got the optimal stage effort to be 3.8. Yes, sir. That was in reality, it's best approximated to four. Okay. That's why fan out of four is special because the buffering in, in, in reality happens in stage in multiples of four. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me go back to the question here. Uh, has anybody else joined? Let me just see one second. Yeah, no, I think, uh, Chetan Gokhale, I thought I saw. Okay. Uh, okay, then I'll just take up any other questions that you may have now. Sir, myself, Abhishek, I would like to ask one question. Yes. Sir, uh, what all software skills we need to learn to enter into design verification kind of profiles after learning digital IC design and analog IC design? Okay, software skills, usually one scripting language is very useful. Okay, Perl or Python, shell scripting. Okay, this kind of uh, knowledge is usually very, very helpful. 
ओके ओके एंड वेरी लॉग एक्चुअली हेलो एंड वेरी लॉग इज डेफिनेटली अ वेरी गुड स्किल टू हैव इफ यू आर अप्लाइंग इन द डिजाइन स्पेस यस ओके सर सर आई एम ऑलरेडी वेल वर्स्ड विद सी प्लस प्लस सो कैन दिस वर्क और आई हैव टू स्विच टू पाइथन नो यू विल हैव टू नो सम अदर स्क्रिप्टिंग लैंग्वेज सी सी प्लस प्लस इज वेरी गुड इफ यू वांट टू डू समथिंग वेरी फास्ट but it is it is not very good when you want to just operate on files you know parse strings you know parse the output of a file log file and understand if there is a problem or not those things are much better handled with python and other things or okay. perl or whatever okay so Thank you sir. will have to know some other scripting language yeah but once you know c++ the scripting language is a very easy okay sir. okay thank you sir yeah one second there are some questions on uh, greeting chat sir. yeah uh, one second let me just look at the questions on chat uh about yeah so okay okay one second how do you find the region of transistors in week 1 assignment questions sorry uh who is this pavan kumar ओके अभिषेक ओझा आई जस्ट आंसर्ड जगदीश आई एम इंटरेस्टेड इन फ्रंट एंड आई एम फैमिलियर विद डिजिटल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स ओके फैमिलियर विद डिजिटल इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स डिजिटल वीएलएसआई डिजिटल आईसी डिजाइन वेरी लॉग एंड बेस या आई थिंक दिस इज एटलीस्ट गुड इनफ टू गेट शॉर्टलिस्टेड फॉर द इंटरव्यू यू लाइक यू हैव टू क्लियर दैट देयर टेस्ट एंड द इंटरव्यू ऑफ कोर्स okay uh okay can you continue this course for next semester also no 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 it will be offered only in jan okay gopi chand uh gopi chand are you on the call yeah yes sir okay how do you see these advancements in machine learning and artificial intelligence affecting the field of vls design in the coming years can you provide examples of real world applications where concepts learned in this course are particularly relevant and significantly impact the overall system i actually generated those questions using chat gpt so, sir so sorry i actually generated those questions using chat gpt Oh, okay so okay so um so first of all i i had mentioned in my introductory lecture right why you need to study this yes, course yes, correct sir, yes. i had mentioned okay. clearly that yes, the sir. tools that are available today will not be able to give you an answer for anything and everything that you ask especially when you push the env- yes, the envelope right when you yes, push sir. the limit the when you try to make a circuit operate at very high speeds the synthesis tools may just give up it doesn't mean that a solution is not possible you need you need to do something more intelligent to get it to you know work at that speed so for that you will need to know the nuts and bolts of what's happening at the circuit level okay thank you now okay how do you see the advancements in machine learning and un- okay so what 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 exactly is your question i mean there are many ways in which ai is being used in vlsi oh. design okay so in what perspective oh. are you asking this I, question so i'm asking just like a, yeah something like all, all things are replacing so is there any okay. yeah uh see ai is already an integral part okay of of you know of design that's a very a tool so it is i mean it is being used uh, you know not not chat gpt so are you asking you know will chat gpt be used for you know doing some coding and all that no no sir ha ah. no 
so okay so ai and ml is already being used okay especially when there is a lot of data and there is no clear algorithm to actually solve it okay but data may tell you that okay this is probably better than the others kind of thing okay in which case you will find that uh, you know ai ml is useful for example uh, you know for placement and routing you know where to place the circuits it's a good you know uh, place to use ai okay those are hard problems to solve it's not that the automation is actually perfect okay okay, okay. can you explain how to calculate dynamic power so this is there in the uh, lectures no shantanu how to get the solution for it sorry uh, i didn't really get the understand uh, uh, understanding of how to solve the questions which one in the assignments yes sir which assignment uh one second assignment yeah so assignment number 5 ah question 7 actually okay so bala ji yes sir i'm just taking a look at it okay yeah fine question 7 okay so we'll see uh <coughs> so this assignment has uh, given the capacitance values of at each node sir okay so uh, one must uh, find out what is the dynamic power of the entire circuit so yeah. the idea is to find out uh, the switching how each node is switching and yeah. then multiply that with uh, the uh, dynamic power of that node and do it for all the nodes there are about uh, i think there are about pi nodes in the circuit i think Yeah, so, so you a, have to. Has the solution yes, yes. been been posted for this? This is assignment five, so I think Ashwin has posted the solution already. Okay, can you double check that? It's okay, sir. Just check it right now on the portal. Okay, see, yes. for example, if you are given such a circuit, right? If you are given such an arbitrary circuit with the input switching at a particular frequency, okay. what is the total dynamics power of this circuit yes sir. so solution is posted for this problem yeah anyway so let me just explain it here what is the total dynamic power of this summation of all the sum of indi individual powers correct yes, correct sir. yes sir what is pi what is the individual power it is the individual activity factor into ci alpha c vdd squared into f correct if f into whatever the frequency input frequency is is that right yes sir so all you have to do is at each of these nodes you have to figure out what is the total capacitance what is the individual total capacitance at the output of each node it is parasitic capacitance right plus load capacitance correct is that right <coughs> yes sir yes sir yeah so now if the if the activity factor right for example if the input to this nand gate happens to be 1 and the input to this nor gate happens to other input happens to be 0 then effectively the nand gate and nor gate are acting like inverters correct is that right yes sir yes sir 
so then what will happen the activity factor at every node therefore will simply be 1 okay uh, yeah one uh, correct yes sir so therefore it's now straight forward alpha i will be 1 right so balaji in the question is it that the activity factors are different one second sir so this yeah in this circuit like they have uh, so he has defined a set of different clocks so it okay. is different yeah so, so he has given so you have to now figure out the activity factor also yeah okay so for example so you just see this okay let us say this input is switching at you know such a frequency okay whether as the next input is switching at half the frequency you you so what will be the output for this if this is a this is b this is y okay a is a, a is like this it is switching at a certain frequency okay a b is switching at half the frequency what will be what will the output of y look like what is the output y so when both the both a and b are high yeah then y will be low y will be low yeah correct so for the input a now what is the activity factor it is 1 right because every cycle it is switching yes sir what is the activity factor for b 50% 50% what is the activity factor for y what's the activity factor for y so okay so why for a what did we say if this is the frequency right if this is the frequency right f equal to uh, let's say this is the time period where t equal to 1 by f okay in t seconds it is making a transition from 0 to 1 correct yes sir for b every 2t seconds it's making a transition to from 0 to 1 yes sir what about y in 2t seconds it's making a transition from 1 to 0 right so therefore this will also be 0.5 correct yes sir Uh, for that particular problem, yeah, uh, it, the to find out the activity factor, it will it, uh, it will be easier because it is just a set of flops. It is a counter circuit. So if you if you decom if you look at it and uh, I mean right. identify which blocks are uh, flip flops, you can identify it's a counter finally, and every every node there will be switching. Every node there is switching. So that's all. So but I, yeah. so what I have given you here is actually a more complex case. correct okay where the y is actually the duty cycle of y is not 50% yes sir yes but it is having an activity factor of 0.5 yes sir okay you get me you understand 
So can you explain the last part about how we got zero point half as the no no. So I am saying, don't be confused by the duty cycle. B has a duty cycle of fifty percent. A also has a duty cycle of fifty percent. All I am saying is, look at in how many clock cycles, in how many time periods is it making a transition from zero to one? Okay. So, if for example A and B were simply clocks, this is how it will continue. Correct. Yes. Sir. So what will happen every two T cycles? Y will go from one to zero once and come back. That means this node Y will go down from VDD to zero and then come back to VDD. Every two T cycles, every two T seconds. Yes, sir. So therefore, that's all I'm saying. So therefore. If the activity factor of A is defined as one, that is hundred percent. Every t seconds it is switching, right? Because I have said f equal to one by t, right? It is as a fraction of that frequency. How often is it switching? Ha ha, got it, got it. Okay. So therefore, A, B, and Y have a activity factor of fifty percent. Got it, sir. Okay. Okay. Ah. Uh, Yeah, so basically, the idea of a keeper device is to prevent a, a circuit from floating, right? So uh, I think Papu Singh asked this question, right? Uh huh. So, yes. So if you had a dynamic gate like this, right? Yes, sir. And this is the clock, and this is the input A and output Y. Then, when the clock is cut off, when clock equal to VDD, yeah. right? You will find that the node, the output Y, will be floating. Suppose A equal to zero, yes, then sir. this will be floating at VDD. Right. Yes, sir. So what we are saying is, if you just connected it like this. Okay. Okay. No, you have to put an inverter. Sorry. Right. You have to you have to connect it uh, through feedback with an inverter. Right. Because if this is VDD, okay, and I thought of put another device here. Okay, so we will connect the inverter with the CMOS. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. So you take this, correct. So if yes. this is VDD, yeah. this will be ground. Yes, okay, but this guy should be a weak device. Yeah, this is weak pull up. Okay. Yes, sir. So then, what will happen is, if this is VDD, then the output of the inverter will be zero. So even when the when phi equal to VDD here, the output y will not be floating. Okay. It will be at VDD. It will be basically, driven to VDD. Sir, basically, it will prevent uh, floating. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay, oh, if sir. the flop is under cutoff, VGS less than and uh, uh, equal to zero, some leakage up to this layer, but if there's below the minimum frequency, no, I did not understand this question. Okay, Zafar, yes, I will uh, talk to NPTEL and see that it is uh, uploaded. 
Okay. This is anyway a Zoom recording, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. So I think that sir, will get uploaded. Okay. So one small doubt. So you told that fractional bids are allowed. Yes, so, sir. If in case of NMOS, if suppose my minimum bid is two lambda. Yeah. And and during sizing of certain uh, logic, I got NMOS bid as three by two time, like one point five times of two lambda. So that will be three lambda. So sir, uh, such uh, many like many combinations will exist, right? Yeah, yeah. So what what they will do is see ultimately in the layout, right? How will how will the transistors look? Okay, in the layout, the transistors will look like this. Okay, this is the uh, uh, I think I'll use green for diffusion so that it's this clear. Okay, and uh, this is an NMOS transistor. Okay, and then I have the PMOS shorting like this. Okay, and yeah. then you have something else to indicate that this is a PMOS transistor, this yellow thing. Okay, yes. So, sir. what really matters is you know whether you can draw this length or not. This W, this is WP, this is WN. Yes, sir. Okay. So you can draw certain dimensions up to a certain resolution. Okay. So to that level, fraction is allowed. Maybe you cannot, you cannot do like uh, one point, you know, 20, 20 point nine, 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 four Lambda that you can't do. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, understood, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Screenshot and capacitive coupling. Okay. What is this? Let me just take a look at this one second. Kiman Shu Singh. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Wha so, what is the question here, Iman Shu? Sir, how does that uh, node flip in that case? Which node? Uh, sir, the one I have circled. Okay, no, no. In the sense, what do you mean by how does that node flip? You mean, suppose it was storing a zero earlier and you applied a one. Sir, you have related it to the speed of clock edge. So, uh, how does that relation hold out? Uh, so, I no, I I don't quite understand. How I have related, I mean, are you talking about clock overlap? Sir, you were mentioning that there was, there is no zero and zero rise and fall time. But if that was not the case, then capacitive coupling can cause the node to flip. No, in the sense that, so is this was in the discussion re related to whole time, is it? Um, Yes, sir. Hold time and setup time. Okay. See, uh, <clears throat> I think what I'm what I'm trying to say here, right, is that uh, the uh, 
see when you when you have such a okay I don't know if this was the thing, phi, phi bar, phi bar, right? So I think what I was trying to say here is that, see, if this clock edge was ideal, okay, if this phi bar went like this, or the phi went exactly like this, okay, which implies phi bar happened to be exactly the opposite, okay? Yes, sir. Then what will happen is the moment instantaneously, right? Let me call this transmission gate T1, T2. So here, when phi equal to 1 and phi bar equal to 0, T1 equal to on, T2 equal to off, correct? Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. As soon as immediately, instantaneously after that edge, T1 will be equal to off, T2 will be equal to on, correct? Mm -hmm. Right? So what yes, will happen is that any input change in D after this edge, so if this D changes after the edge, nothing will happen. Because that T1 has got instantaneously cut off. In fact, there is an extra okay. delay through that inverter, actually. First inverter, I1. I1, I2, I3. Right? So, nothing will mm -hmm. happen. But what I'm trying to say is, suppose these edges were not ideal, as is the case in reality. Suppose they were like this. Mm -hmm. Then, even in this transition region, after that edge, some change in D can go through. Okay. Because T1 has not yet cut off. See, T, T1 has to cut off and T1 has T2 has to turn on to hold the data. Right? Yes. But suppose T1 and T2 are on at the same time momentarily. Which mm -hmm. is what happens in reality. Right? You can have some D go through and actually corrupt that flop. That And that's the origin of this whole time that comes in. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay, assuming that all transistors in the circuit of negative edge flip flop have non zero sub threshold leakage. No, why, why do you say this? Who, who asked this question? Assuming that all transistors in the circuit of a negative edge flip flop have non zero sub threshold leakage. The clock may stop working for a clock frequency less than some F min. Why? Okay. So Chetan Gokhale, electrical effort when there's no load is zero. Because load capacitance is zero. Okay. Sir, greetings, sir. Actually, you had called my name previously. I was not there. So my question was, uh, what are all the projects that I can do, which I can showcase after this course, actually? 
yeah so i here i think you have to like i said right you can do some layout based projects okay you have to do a simulation based design here so these tools like lt spice and electric are excellent tools to pursue some projects on this okay thank you sir and one more thing as digital electronics was a prerequisite for this course uh, yeah. after ic design is there uh, something i can do so that i can add up on this ic design so uh, so i have a course called embedded memory design okay where i talk about srams and drams okay that sort of a very good follow up though it is not on nptel but if if you are interested in that i do have some video recordings of the course that i taught especially during the pandemic and i could share those videos with you yes sir please do share please Can write I... to me write to me for that okay okay fine sir. okay yeah ha ah. so why is falling not allowed in i mean uh, you the input cannot fall because there is no way to pull the output up okay anyway i think we are out of time we started at 5 it's over 1 and 1/2 hours now so are there any other questions i think technically i have gone through all the important aspects and i i really like some of the questions by the way okay so good if there are no more questions then i think we can stop okay good luck for the ensam exam the assignment solutions will be posted okay right so then thank you all bye thank you thank sir. you sir bye thank you sir